All right, with that brief introduction to eigen analysis, let's now get back to our flight dynamics. So we had lambda k equals sigma k plus i omega k for k equals 1, 8. So the magnitude of each, each omega k and the sign and magnitude of, lamb, of sigma k indicate the behavior of the kth mode. So if omega k equals 0, the motion is monotonic. There's no oscillation. And if omega k is not zero, the motion is oscillatory. In the case of oscillatory motion, we'll always have a pair of complex eigenmodes. We'll always have lambda equals sigma plus or minus i omega, as we saw for the spring mass damper system. Now, if sigma k is positive, the mode is unstable. Which means that the aircraft will have exponential divergence from the trim state. Sketching that out means that a small initial perturbation grow larger and larger without bound. Whereas if sigma k is less than zero, then the mode is stable. And the motion decays. down to zero. Finally, let's consider simplifications due to symmetry. In general, the uh, Jacobian matrices A and B have non-zero elements. However, if we have geometric symmetry, in the left-right sense, aerodynamic symmetry which means that v naught, which is the five foot velocity, is equal to the roll rate at pitch and the yaw rate at pitch and the bank angle at pitch are all, or at trim, sorry, are all zero and negligible onboard angular momentum then the Jacobian matrices A and B have the following form if we reorder the equations where blank spots indicate elements which are zero or nearly zero. I'm going to write this out, which will take a minute. But this is going to be the last thing that I do t that we do today in this lecture, and we'll look at the naturally arising subsets of this equation that you're going to see in a moment over the next few lectures 
as we analyze the dynamics. So it's delta u, delta v, delta w, and delta theta, delta v, delta p, delta r, and delta phi, and delta xe, delta ye, delta ze, and delta psi. This is equal to. Okay, I'm not going to write the actual elements. I'm going to show where the elements are significantly zero and where they're significantly non zero. And this is times delta u, delta v, delta w, delta theta, delta. Delta R Oops, sorry, it's just guys, I made a mistake here. Sorry, this is U W Q. These of course must be the same. W Q and this is Delta V Delta P. Delta R, delta phi, delta xe, delta ye, delta ze, and delta psi. Plus, this is now the matrix B, slightly reordered. With delta delta t delta delta e uh, sorry delta delta f flat delta delta e delta delta a ailerons and delta delta r Rudder. Now you notice I've left some blank spots throughout this, and that was intentional. I'm going to put some lines in these to help visualize breaking this up into several smaller systems. So now to see where these are significantly non zero. So this subset up in this corner is a four by four matrix. This and this blocks are essentially zero. For this block, here we have a generally non zero four by four matrix. With these and these blocks being generally zero. The final Block has two generally non zero blocks. With the third being near zero. And then for the B matrix to do with the controls, we've got this is going to be a uh, 12 by 5 matrix. So here we're going to have three elements and three rows that are essentially non-zero with the fourth being basically zero, as well as these elements being basically non-zero. The rest are all near zero. So what we have is that the first four rows are what we call the longitudinal dynamics. Longitudinal. 
The next four rows are the lateral bananas. And the final four rows, which we've already determined doesn't affect the dynamics, we call the navigation subset. So since we're primarily here interested in the dynamics, over the next few lectures, we'll look at first uh, both the longitudinal and the lateral dynamics. This is a lot of information to take in, including the mathematical analysis techniques, but we're going to go through this again in class and you'll have an opportunity to practice when we do this.